One of the coolest parts of the Splatoon series to me is how all the weapons are based off things in real life, and there's way more detail to it than you might realize. So today, with the help of Nintendo Land, I want to cover it. Hey guys, I'm Nintendo Land, and I've been playing Splatoon since the early days of the test fires back on the Wii U, so it's been quite a while for me, and I've always been a Charger main from day one. Well now, I don't play that competitively, instead I find cool secrets and hidden details throughout all types of games, not just Splatoon, but Nintendo in general. So if you love Nintendo, feel free to check out the channel and subscribe while you're there. Thanks guys. So with that being said, we're going to cover every main, sub, and special weapon, including the three new weapons that were just added in the update. Subscribe if you enjoy, and let's get started. With the shooters, we first start off with the splatter shot, and of course, like always, in every game it's based off of a water gun, but this time it has a cap that almost resembles the cap of toothpaste. The Splattershot Jr. is a cheaper or dollar store version of a water gun, even with a little plastic cap on top. The brand new Splattershot Nova is based off of a space-themed water gun in Japan. In fact, it's almost identically built the same exact way, which is very interesting. Instead of using a reference, Nintendo just said, you know what, we'll use the actual thing. The Splattershot Pro is based on the Super Soaker CPS 2000, once again just being another popular water gun. The NZAP 85 is of course the NES Zapper, and obviously the 85 referencing the release year 1985 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The Hero Shot replica is based off of a FNP90 SMG. The ink chamber is an ink cartridge for a printer with a roll of printer filament on the base. Jet Squelcher is simply based on a pressure washer hose. You could also argue part power drill as well. The squeezer is based on a champagne bottle even with a cork on the end, and the handle is based on a wooden pocket knife handle. The arrow spray is based off of an airbrush. Sploosh and splash o -matic guns kind of have a steampunk vibe to them, but if we were to kind of pin them down to one thing, they look like a combination of a tattoo gun and a pen slash mechanical pencil. You can even see where the clip of the pen is on the top. And the handle also reminds me of the handle of a revolver. The 52 and 96 gals are based off of gallon jugs, and the 96 gal is based off of mineral water filters with the inside of the barrel being filled with rocks. It's a way to purify liquids. The H3 and L3 are based off of a hose reel and obviously even have the nozzle on the end. Flingsa Roller is based off a Swiss Army knife, and the roller itself is a pen cap with a clip on the end as well. The normal roller's ink tank is based off a bicycle water bottle holder, and in general, a lot of the rollers have inspiration from bike handle parts. The base of the Dynamo Roller is based off a Dynamo motor. Carbon Roller has more of the heavy bike references with bottle cages for the ink tank, and you could argue that the carbon is based off a carbon fiber bike, since the gradient pattern and bike handle thing at the bottom are similar. The Big Swig Roller is mostly more bike references, but it also has a cup with soda on it, which you take a big swig out of. Next up we have the chargers and of course the splat charger. Now this one is just a sniper. If anything, it just has a bottle of ink in the back for the ink reservoir and an air pump handle at the end, and that's really about it. And the splatter scope is the same thing just with a sniper scope on the top. The E-Leader is based off of a gas tank trailer in the back and an actual gas pump in the front with just a long nozzle. You can even see the gas pump meter screen in the front, which is a nice detail. And the 4K scope version once again just adds a sniper scope on top. The Squiffer is a combination of a dish soap bottle for the ink reservoir and a Lysol spray bottle for cleaning surfaces. Hold on guys, you're not ready for this one. The Bamboozler? Get this. It's made out of bamboo. Um, yeah? I guess if you wanted to be more specific, the handle actually resembles the cane of Captain Cuttlefish. It is his favorite weapon after all. It also has a cap at the end and a little iron sight on top. And finally with the Goo Tuber, it is based off of a siphon pump. Literally the entire gun is just a siphon pump. And if you don't know what that is, it basically transfers most liquids and can also pump air for inflatables. And of course it can also be used to change oil. But wait, there's more because a brand new charger called the Snipe Rider 5H, which is based off of a number to pencil, but not just that. The pencil has a little sharpener on the end, but the pencil itself is something unique. You can see the pieces of lead inside because it's a multi-lead pencil, or a rocket pencil called in Japan, where this was actually the craze about 15 years ago. I remember kids used to have them all the time in my classes. The 5H in the name represents one of multiple different graphite hardness levels. And also, some were able to point out the blue plastic around the pencil could very well be a compass. Now, 
jumping into the sloshers. The normal slosher is really just a bucket of paint, nothing more. There's a handle and a little coil spring to hold the handle up, and that's really about it. Tri Slosher is actually an arts and craft painting bucket normally used for kids. Now the sloshing machine is clearly based on a washing, oh wrong picture. The sloshing machine of course is based on a washing machine without a door because you can see the inside with the metal holes going around the cylinder. The blob blobber is definitely an interesting one because they can be based off of many things. First off a sink definitely comes to mind. We have a handle with a hot and cold symbol on the end. It could also resemble not only a sink but a bathtub with the handle on the side in order to get in and out. Some even brought up this could be a hot tub or maybe even a bidet with all the different nozzles on the inside that would <clears throat> squirt out water. I hope this isn't the case. And then finally, the Explosher is actually a jet heater put inside of a jerry can. There is also an orange shock absorber on the side with a pressure gauge on the front. Hydra is based off a fire hydrant with three pressure water nozzles at the ends. The side is a giant propane tank and you can see that there are pieces of a fighter fire hose on it. Just a bunch of firefighting references here. Ballpoint is based off of, well, a ballpoint pen. And even the back of it clicks open when you switch between the two firing modes. Really neat animation. Heavy is actually similar to the gals in which it's very based off a water cooler bottle with a jug as the base. Nautilus, while of course being a reference to, well, an actual Nautilus in the ocean, is also primarily based off a wickless Bunsen burner. Mini Splatling is the most boring one here. It's literally just a minigun. I asked around for so many people and no one could find a different explanation. So if there's something you think it might be based on, let me know in the comments. Dapple Doolies are mostly based off dental stuff as it has a toothbrush being held together by floss on both of them. Normal Doolies are basically based off spray bottles. The Gluga Doolies are, well, glue guns. These are kind of obvious, but as a bonus fact, the name in other languages is called 525 Kelvin, which is, you know, the temperature of hot glue guns. And that's why Gluga does 52.5 damage. Dually Squatchers are basically two battery-powered drills. They look incredibly similar to them. Tetra Dualies are based off shoes, specifically the shocks ones. As you can see, the bottom of them matches the design really well. Tenabrella is a dome camping tent with a hiking stick to hold the weapon. Normal Brella is, well, basically a normal umbrella. And Undercover Brella is a more see-through design. And you could also argue that it has some inspiration off that one scene from The Kingsman, especially considering Splatoon 2 had some spy gear that they used to match with the Undercover Brella. The black Blaster is based on a hot rod car with a spray can that's attached to the back. The inside is open as if a car is in the middle of being worked on and there's a suspension coil in the middle. The front end looks like a paint can slash muffler hybrid with a gas pedal right below it. The range blaster is the same thing as the regular blaster but more stretched out this time. The front looks more like a hot rod bike instead of a car and it also has tubing that you would find in the hood of a car. The Luna Blaster was definitely a difficult one to try to figure out what this thing is supposed to be, but it definitely could be a jet turbine, and also the transparency on the outer shell could resemble that of a 90s computer where you could see the interior of the monitor and kind of matches that same type of design. The Clash Blaster is based off of a mechanical pencil sharpener, the front even extends as well, and there's crayons wrapped around the base like a gun belt. Finally, the Rapid Blaster and Rapid Blaster Pro are probably based off of Nerf guns. They have the blocky, toy, plasticky texture on the outside, and they also have rails such as the Pro, which has a long rail on the end, which looks like it could definitely be attachable. They both also have the same orange tips at the end that reference Nerf guns, but it could also reference airsoft guns, as they have to have these orange tips to distinguish themselves from real guns. Inkbrush is a paint tube held together with paint bristles on the end where the ink is placed. It also has a type of container on it that could be taken off and refilled, and the paint flows from the container to the bristles. Kind of like a marker, but it's still a paintbrush. Octobrush is a line drawing tool called a sumitsubo. I probably said that wrong. Sumitsubo. <laughs> Next up, we have the stringers. We only have two of them currently, but of course they have some really cool references. The tri-stringer resembles a traditional bow and arrow, but the string seems to be made of fishing line and there's actually a fishing rod on the side of the staff and the fishing pole itself is made to be at a bend just like a bow. And the ink chamber and shooting mechanism is a handheld air pump and two mini ones, one on the top and one on the bottom. And the reflux bow is based on a bottle of Yakult, which is a fermented milk drink used for acid reflux in Japan, funny enough. 
However, the tip of the bottle is actually a metal hole that actually resembles a power drill with no drill bit inside of it. And the base of the bow could resemble a cylinder from a raising computer chair. And as a previous baseball player myself, I think it's safe to say that the handle resembles grip tape for a baseball bat. Splatana wiper is basically a windshield wiper with the handle being a badman racket handle. The Splatana stamper is an old labeling handle, and this weapon is even more detailed than you might think, as the inkling text written on it is actually in letter order in another language. That's absolutely crazy. The Rainmaker is based on Shashihoko, which is an animal in Japanese folklore with the head of a tiger and the body of a carp. This was used as kind of a good luck symbol in order to bring rain to dying crops. These are also placed on many roofs in Japan because they are used to protect them from potential house fires. That's why we also saw the two giant golden statues of Cheap Cheeps at the top of Hands On Hall in Mario 3D World. The flippers on the back end also always reminded me of little wind-up bathtub toys for kids. And of course, inside the mouth, you can see the cannon in which the giant blast shoots from. Now, for the Grizzco weapons, they're pretty much the weapons we have already, but just, like, illegally modified by Mr. Grizz. The Grizzco bamboozler looks like an air pump now and even has a CO2 tank at the bottom. We can see the inside of the Grizzco blaster and all the wiring that's been reworked in order to hotwire this thing to work a lot better. The Grizzco umbrella just had the entire cloth part ripped off to the point where we only see the interior wiring. The Grisco sloshing machine didn't really need anything to be OP, but it got some extra tubing along the outsides, and the Grisco stringer got tons of extra nozzles along the bow. But one thing consistent with all of these Grisco weapons are the little yellow vials that sit on the top and bottom of the weapon. These could be vials filled with golden eggs that we've collected in order to power these devices by making juice out of the eggs, in turn making these weapons super overpowered. We also got a Grisco Splatana Stamper, which is pretty much the same thing and also just has those vials all the way along it on the outsides. If anything, it kind of reminds me of the wheel of a pirate ship, and also kind of like a chainsaw now that they're all spinning simultaneously. Splashdown is basically the generic superhero landing with a punch on the floor. Nothing too special here. Trizuka is mostly based off of, well, a bazooka, but it also has a few parts that look like they're from pipes or car air conditioning and insulation. One part also has three screws on it, which could be used to connect to a faucet and a garden hose. Reef Slider is based off an inflatable pool toy. It's a shark with a muscle on it and four bottles in the back that shoot it forward. The rails left behind are based on pool divers. Big Bubbler is, well, a big bubbler, though the thing that deploys it is a zip cord. Ink Vacuum is specifically a backpack vacuum cleaner with a rigged leaf blower in order to suck stuff in. Booyah Bomb is definitely based off the spirit ball from Dragon Ball. I do find it really cool that from the transition to Splatoon 2 to 3, you get some lightning effects. That's definitely based off of Super Saiyan 2. Weightbreaker is just a pop and catch toy where you basically bounce a ball up and try to catch it inside the little thingy. Ultra Stamp is a squeaky hammer with a plastic jug attached to the back to hold ink, and there's also a Squid Force logo used to hold the stamp template. The Tenta Missile Special is named after Tentacola. It has a missile launcher, which is like a rocket launcher, and soda crates incorporated, and the bottles themselves that actually fly at enemies are literally just soda bottles. The little bits on Tri-Strike is basically a pencil case box with pencil sharpeners at the markers and pencils as the missiles. You will never believe what the crab tank and ink storm could possibly be based on. I'm gonna have to let you try to figure it out because it just, I can't explain it. Tacticaler is based off one of these types of, well, coolers, which commonly have drinks inside them. Killer Whale 5.1 is basically the term used for surround sound, and the speakers are raw electromagnet meters with a little bit of a suction bomb stuck on the back of it. For Zipcaster, a lot of people know about the obvious one being the sticky hand, since you're literally stretching your arm, but it's also probably just flat out based off of Spider-Man, judging by a bit of dialogue from the hero mode, which directly references the amazing Spider-Man with the amazing Agent 3. Starting with the splat bomb for the subs, the ink is kept in a plastic container in the middle, and it reminds me of the giant balls that you roll around in, where it keeps you secure in the middle. There's also connector sticks on the outsides. The suction bomb is based on an upside down spray can attached to the end of a plunger. The burst bomb is obviously based on a water balloon. The curling bomb, yep, you guessed it, is based on a curling stone. The fizzy bomb is an exploding soda can when shaken and also has hose clamps to hold the clips on the top and bottom. The auto bomb is based on the Jams Tech's Manned Research Submissible, also named the Shinkai 6500 in Japan. So a pretty historic Japanese submarine. A lot of sushi restaurants serve soy sauce in plastic containers that look like fish, and that is what the torpedo is based on. You can actually see the propellers of an actual torpedo in the back. 
Not to mention, the antenna on the end reminds me of one of those straw cups with the cap on the straw. Ink mines are based off of landmines that are already in the ground, so you can't really see it, it's just an outline of it. The squid beacon is based on an airport surveillance radar. The point sensor is based on a space satellite. The sprinkler is based on a water sprinkler. I don't think I need to say anything else here. The splash wall is based off of a syringe needle, which also looks like it has wiper blades at the top, which means that the Splatana wiper was always planned. Toxic Mist is just a chemistry clamp with a beaker. I don't know what the mist is actually combined of to make the ink so poisonous, but yeah. The angle shooter is based off of a highlighter because it highlights the enemy. And that is everything. What is your favorite reference? Be sure to check out Nintendo Land in the description because he helped out a ton with this video, and I'll see you all next time.